We're nearing the end of 2023, but it's not quite over yet. So in today's episode, Mark and I will talk about key year-end planning strategies for those nearing or embracing their retirement years. We're going to talk about everything from optimizing your investment portfolio to safeguarding your assets to exploring tax savings opportunities. And be sure to listen to the end when we talk about key estate planning issues that have been created by the SECURE Act. It's easy to get lost on the way to retirement. Things like taxes, improper planning, and excessive market risk can all lead you astray from your goal of a successful and happy retirement. That's where Liz Whittaberry comes in. She's a holistic financial advisor and the founder of Best Path Advisors, and she can help guide you to a better financial path. This is Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittaberry. Hey, everybody. Welcome into Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittaberry and myself here to talk end of year financial planning. Some things to think about as we unpack and unwind what is 2023. We're going to get into a couple of areas for you guys, hopefully share some useful nuggets of information along the way, as we tend to do to keep you on your best path for retirement right here on Retire on Your Best Path. Liz, how are you? What's going on? I am good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Just looking forward to chatting a little bit. Uh, The year is coming down fast and furious, isn't it? It's like, man, it's almost middle of November already. It's like, holy cow. So... Yeah, I just ordered my turkey for Thanksgiving. So, <laughs> yeah, my wife did. She went and picked it up. She was so she went last week, I think, and she was like, "Nope, not on sale yet." It was like sixty dollars, and then she went back uh, just I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, and it was like half. It was on sale. It was like thirty bucks. So it's like holy that's moly! Awesome. It's crazy though how yeah. expensive they've gotten. Yeah, that's that's great to pay half price for the same thing because when it's gone, it's gone. You eat it. Yeah, I know, and it's you know it's. Inflation, right? That's one of the well, hey, that might be on our list. You never know. We'll talk about that. So <laughs> let's get into <laughs> let's get into our conversation a little bit here about some year end items to think of. Let's just start, Liz, with general planning and, and general investment strategies. As the year winds down, what are a couple of things that people should have at the top of that radar and just that general planning philosophy? I would say first off, uh, take a minute to review your investments, your portfolio, make sure that you've weeded out any underperformers and you think about rebalancing, that's always an important thing, and make sure that you're set up to have a good start to next year. With the portfolios that I'm managing, I'm keeping that risk allocation just neutral or slightly underweight uh, because it has been a volatile year and could very well be a volatile year next year. But we always want to stay invested for the long term, so we don't want to pull out of all investments, but just being mindful of uh, where we're at in the market and in the market cycle right now and uh, having a a good balance between equities and bonds to keep that risk Mm -hmm. at the level that you want it at. Okay. Yeah. Now, and that's easy enough yeah. to do, right? Talk to your advisor. Right. And that's part of those, you know, the review process, which many people are going through this time of the year as well. And the other thing would be to look at your contributions to your retirement plans or oh, I- yeah. IRAs, whatever you can contribute to. Have you maxed that out? Mm-hmm. And if you have maxed it out and you still have money to save, then consider doing some after tax contributions if your plan offers it. But look at what you can do to get more money into your retirement plan if you have money that you can put there. Is there dates on maxing out the contributions, Liz? Do we have to have that done by a certain time? Does that carry over? By the end of the year. End of the year, 1231? For any company plan, you have to have it done by the end of the year. Now, if if you're saving to an IRA or a SEP IRA or a simple IRA, then that carries over into next year. You can make some contributions next year that are effective for this year. Okay. All right. We're good to know. So those dates are often important, especially, again, as the year's winding down. And speaking of dates, let's talk a little bit about taxes. Uh, Let's start, first of all, because obviously with the RMD side, there's definitely some dates there. So I want to talk about that. But anything on like the the tax loss harvesting side? Yes. And it could be a good year to take advantage of tax loss harvesting. If you have any unrealized losses, you can sell those investments to trigger those losses. And you can use that to offset gains and do your, when you're doing your rebalancing. Or you can also use up to 3000 of losses to offset your income tax. But if you're in a low tax bracket and you actually don't have any losses, you have gains because uh, your investments have accumulated over many years. If you're in that low tax bracket this year, then you can harvest the gains. 
at a low cost. So it's a good time to look at what gains or losses you have and what you might be able to do to make the most of the tax situation that you have this year. Don't lose out on a low tax bracket or the opportunity to take advantage of some tax loss harvesting if that's your situation. With the year being down, with the market being rocky like it's been, that's why you want to look at that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And it's always good to look at that at the end of the year just to just to say, do I have an opportunity to take advantage of where I'm at tax-wise this year? Because by now you should know what's your income going to be for the year. How much room do you have in your tax bracket? Do you have some space that you can use and and think through all of the things? Now, you may have some windfalls that could impact your taxes, some RSUs that are going to invest or some stock options or deferred comp payouts or bonuses. And so you need to keep that in mind as well and make sure that you have proper tax withholding set up for that. And then some people have capital gains distributions, and those could be higher this year because it has been a little bit of a rocky year. So you want to mm. think about strategies that might minimize your tax liability on that. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and so, again, speaking of the tax situation with RMDs, make sure that we're getting these done, right? Because while they uh, – I don't know, has the has the reduced tax penalty kicked in since the Secure Act 2 kicked in now? that I know they went from 50% penalty on RMDs to 25. Has that started yet? I think that's 2024. Okay. I don't have. <laughs> so you, oh, you my, really? <laughs> there were so many things in that, oh and I don't gosh, have the yeah. list which yeah. is phasing in. But I think that's 2024. Um, well, it's even a bigger but, reason then, right? You want to make sure you do your RMD yeah. so you don't get hit with a penalty. Yeah, you don't want to miss them. You can aggregate them if you have more than one IRA account, so you can aggregate them and take them from one. And if you're over 70 and a half, you can use the qualified charitable distribution to get money out of the IRA to a charity and save on income taxes. So you might want to look at that too. Yeah. And it's, it's 73, right? So for, for folks, so again, make sure that you're doing your, you know, RMDs, your required minimum distributions. If you haven't started those yet, you know, then you definitely have to have that conversation with your financial professional. Cause if you're turning, if you've turned 73 this year, you want to make sure that you're getting that underway. Technically, I guess you have a buffer in the next year, but then it means you have to take two next year. So Make sure that's on your list to talk about as well. Born before 1960, and if you're born in 1960 or later, then it's going to be 75. So yeah. you actually have a little more room. Yeah, a little to more time there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, if you turn 73 earlier in, in this year in 2023, make sure you're having that chat. Uh, all right, insurance and healthcare planning. What's some items here? We're currently in Medicare open enrollment, and companies are in there. Most of them, I think, would be in their benefits open enrollment. So it's a good time to look at what your health insurance is, make sure that it's what you want, make sure that it's covering what you uh, want it to cover at the cost that you want it to be at. If you have company plans, consider signing up for health savings account. A lot of people still have this option and haven't signed up for it because they don't understand the benefit of the health savings account, the fact that all the money that goes in is completely tax-free. You don't pay tax on what goes in, what it earns, or what you take out if you're using it for medical. And so that's a significant benefit if you have the ability to put money in that. If you met your deductible this year, then maybe take advantage of getting some other things done before year end. Mm, yeah, for sure. And speaking of the yeah. Medicare side, we just did a podcast on that like just a couple episodes ago. So if you want to do a deeper dive into that portion of it, uh, go back and check that one out. That was episode number 32 on Medicare. This is actually episode number 34. So uh, and I guess a great way to, you know, if you're not subscribed to us, by the way, that's a great way to uh, think about that because it gives you a chance to listen to some past stuff, it's future stuff and all that good jazz. So don't forget to subscribe to Retire on Your Best Path. And you can find all that information at uh, Liz's website, bestpathadvisors.com. All right. So uh, let's see what else we got here, Liz. Income, lifestyle. That's kind of the, I think that's the big ones that people kind of think about. They can immediately factor. I think some of the other things we covered, they feel like, okay, I need to talk to my advisor on that. And probably, you know, rightfully so. Uh, maybe income and lifestyle is some things where we can immediately impact that. Like we were just talking about the price of turkeys, for example, <laughs> budgeting to save a little right. bit on, on the holiday things. Yeah. It, this is a good time to review spending because inflation has taken a toll. And I've got a number of people that are retired or getting ready to retire that are going through that exercise right now to say, okay, what is my spending now? What's my spending really at with mm -hmm. all of the inflation we've had and the different changes that I've made? So look at that, 
determine what's good spending, what's bad spending, what changes you want to make, what's your budget now, make sure that your plan is still covering uh, the spending that you want to keep you in the lifestyle that you want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I know people don't like the B word, right? But it, we, right. we always have a budget. Like we always have some sort of a guideline. Like I said, you know, even just something as simple as going to the store and saying, you know, could, could we have paid the $60 for the turkey? Yeah, but why? Right. So we look at those kinds of things, you know, all throughout the year. So just it's a good time to do that. And, and not forget, I think for lifestyle too, winter's coming in and all that good jazz. And we tend to get a little bit more, you know, uh, sheltered in and things of that nature when it's colder. But don't forget to stay active and, and just doing the mental sides of things, too, as we're getting into to the, um, you know, getting to retirement. Like my mom, she's 82. So we just had her over to shoot pool a couple hours the other day to make sure she's out and about doing things every now and again. Right. Right. And and I think that's very good. Very good uh, that, that you're encouraging her to stay active. I think that as we approach the new year and maybe we'll talk about this in the first of, of next year, mm. it's really a good time to think about what's your plan or your resolutions for staying active, yeah. the things that you want to do. And and then you have to think about what's that going to cost, you know, and that, oh, yeah. that comes right back to our spending plan. And I don't like the word budget either. I like sp spending plan. What do I plan to spend my money on and <laughs> right. why Right. Uh, do I plan to spend it? And I think we all have kind of a vague idea of what that is, but you know, you're, you're carrying that around in your head. And if it's not on paper, your your brain never really has it all added up. And so it's yeah. important to time to time to sit down and put it on paper and really look at it. And this would be a good time to do that as yeah, we're heading sure. into a new year. And it's such a nickel and dime world, right? I mean, like we can have a kind of a general outline in our head to your point about what's coming in and what's going out. And we think we got it mapped out, but we tend to do that with the big ticket items. And we just, you know, I mean, it's just constantly going out in these little, you know, little increments, right? So everything is like, a, you know, a streaming service here and a you know, run to the grocery store there and a this, that and the other. And it's just kind of a nickel and dime world. So, you know, having a good strategy in place, certainly a good idea. Uh, next on my list, I don't know how big this one might be as far as year end wind down goes, Liz, but let's just touch on it real fast here. Um, especially with the mortgage rates being what they are now and the housing prices still being fairly high. They've come down a little bit, but real estate and relocation, anything to ponder in here if it's on your uh, agenda to, you know, for your strategy? Well, I do think that timing is always important in real estate. And here in Texas, prices have gone up quite a bit mm -hmm. over the last few years. Property oh, yeah. taxes have gone up. Now we, we're getting a little bit of break on that. Uh, costs to remodel are up. Uh, but, you know, things can always go higher. And so I've got a number of clients that are looking at this exact issue. One client wants to sell their home because it's more than doubled in value and it's going to be more house than they need later in life. Another is wanting to move to Florida, but is waiting for the prices there to cool down and the insurance options to improve because they're having such an issue with property and casualty insurance in Florida right now. I have a client that's oh, wanting yeah, to buy a vacation right? home. Yeah, it was from the yeah. hurricane last year. Yeah. I have a client wanting to buy a vacation home um, because they've found one that has the right price and location. Mm -hmm. Another one that's wanting to put money into the home that they're living in because they want to fix it up and live in it for another 10 years and then sell it. Uh, and so they're looking to put money into it. Uh, and then another client that I can think of that's wanting to buy rental real estate as a retirement investment. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to think about in real estate. And is this a good time? It could be. And it could be a good time of year to actually be buying because maybe there's not as many other people looking into houses yeah. at the moment. That, that's a good point, you know, because I think we immediately think, oh, 8% mortgage is what we're hearing right now, right? It's, you know, a lot of the things that are coming in. So we think, well, I'm not having that conversation. <laughs> so we'll just kick that off of our list. But that's that's a great point. There could be some things where it still does make sense. If it was originally part of your strategy, then make sure you're just at least revisiting that as the year is winding down. Uh, technology. I think from this standpoint, Liz, I really kind of just wanted to remind folks, and and I think we talked about this not too long ago as well. Um, yes. You know, the scammers are out big time all the time, but at the holiday season, you know, November, December, man, they're really cranking it up, right? Right. Yeah, I would like to say don't respond to any text messages. I was just reading a, a article earlier this morning about um, the number of text me message scams that are out there and how they're beginning to look more and more real. The mm -hmm. USPS, you've got a package. The UPS, you've got a package. FedEx, you've got a package. And it's not anything that's actually real. It's just meant to to steal your information. So 
be very mindful of all text messages. Holiday season could be a time where where the scammers ramp that up, knowing yep. that people are going to be expecting a lot of packages. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, just got one. Uh, Mom just got one last week that said her Amazon Prime membership had expired and to, you know, just to follow the link to make sure everything was groovy. And she messaged me and I said, no, <laughs> don't right. don't click on it. I was like, she's like, it looks completely legit. And I was like, I'm sure it does, but don't click on it. If you're worried about it, you contact Amazon directly from, you know, from their website or whatever. And then and like four days later, I got the same email. So I was like, yep, no, they're they're out in force, right? So make sure exactly. that you keep your be head on the swivel. Careful. Yeah, for sure. Be, be very careful. Yeah, update passwords, right? Good time of the year to maybe, I, I know we hate the password thing. It's gotten out of control, but just make sure that you're being, don't use one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we talked about that in the episode. That And so that would be a really good one to review on the things that you should do. Have the secure passwords, the two-factor authentication, a private email. Um, make sure that you even freeze your credit because if somebody did get into anything or trick you into giving information, if your credit's frozen, then you are really protected. It's like you've put a moat around yourself and you've got dead bolts on the door. So yeah. uh, be sure and do that. And we, yeah. we did talk about what was that? Things. Was that seven tips to hack proof yourself? I think that's what that one was, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that was back on episode 28. So check it out. Uh, I feel like this is also a year end uh, reminder of past episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we cover some good stuff, right? So go back and check this out as well. All right. Final one, Liz. We'll wrap it up this week here on the uh, just some items to think about as the year is winding down. End of year items. Any general kind of wealth considerations, uh, gifting, things of that nature, maybe? Because, you know, again, it's the holiday season. I think it's a great time to think about what gifting have you done and what gifting do you want to do this year? You know, the annual limit is 17000 a person. So... If you want to give a bigger gift to kids or grandkids, you can think about that. Think about that annual limit. You can even go over that, of course, but you would need to file a, a form uh, letting the IRS know that you've used up some of your gift limit. And we did talk about that in a prior <laughs> episode. Um, but you can consider a 529 plan. You can consider setting up a Roth for grandkids if they have a job. Uh, you can do some things that will really help your grandkids long term. And those those I think are are good to think about at this time of year. How does that fit into your plan? Now, if you're giving to charity, you can do the qualified charitable distributions if you're over 70 and a half. But if you're not, you could consider giving bigger gifts to charity by setting up a donor advised fund. And the beauty of that is if you've got high income, you can even bunch a number of years of giving into one year, put it in the donor advice fund, and then distribute it out to the charities in the timing that you originally had planned uh, out of that donor advice fund. And that is a really good way to get some tax benefits mm -hmm. while still doing the giving that you plan to do. Okay. You know, the other thing that I want to mention, and we and we talked about this in the the intro, is your estate planning documents. Yeah. It's always important to have those up to date. So it's a good time to review them, make sure that you've got the people named that you want to have named. I just updated mine this year because my kids are now all grown. Oh, and yeah. so I had I had named a friend to be my backup after my husband, but that's no longer necessary because my kids are fully grown and you know, absolutely could step in and manage things or or help with things if they had to. Hopefully they, they don't have to for a very long time. Right, right. Um, but the SECURE Act has made a lot of changes to the way that retirement accounts can be inherited. So you want to look at all of your documents and your beneficiary designations and make sure that everything is going to go where you want it to go and the timing that you want it to go. And you don't have any hiccups or, or issues there. Some of the old trusts that uh, people had written to inherit and be a flow through for all of their assets, um, those may be written in a manner where they don't work with the SECURE Act language. And so you mm. may need to update some of those trusts if that's part of your plan so that you don't end up with some tax consequences that you weren't anticipating or your heirs don't end up with tax consequences that you weren't anticipating. So you want to go back and look at those and make sure that the language allows for any 
deferred tax deferred accounts, any retirement accounts to be managed along the lines of the SECURE Act instead yeah. of the rules that were in place before the SECURE Act was passed. Yeah, for sure. Right. And make sure you got those key documents in place. Definitely uh, powers of attorney. Those are super important, you know, things of that nature as well. Right. So always a good idea to run through these different document pieces, especially as the year is winding down. And, and often if you're working with a financial professional, a lot of the stuff's going to be on your review conversations anyway. And, you, you know, maybe your reviews at the end of the year, maybe your reviews at the beginning of the year. So you may have done this earlier in 2023, but if not, it's a good idea and a good reminder. And so hopefully this helped you out a little bit. And of course, if you need some help, well, reach out to Liz and stop by her website, get onto her calendar and have a conversation. Of course, she's the founder and financial advisor at Best Path Advisors. And you can find her online at bestpathadvisors.com. That's bestpathadvisors.com. Lots of good tools, tips, and resources there. She's got some webinars, all sorts of good stuff that you can check out as well. So, because learning is certainly a focus for her. So, check that stuff out. Anything else, Liz, that we might have missed before we go? That is it. I just want to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving and we're always here to help you be on your best path. So we look forward to talking to you again after Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be back with more episodes here in December. So you guys have a great holiday. And we'll see you next time right here on Retire on Your Best Path with Liz Whittle. The preceding program is sponsored by Best Path Advisors, which is solely responsible for its content. Securities offered through J.W. Cole Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice offered through J.W. Cole Advisors. Best Path Advisors, J.W. Cole Financial, and J.W. Cole Advisors are unaffiliated entities. The opinions expressed by Liz Whitberry should not be construed as specific tax, legal, or investment advice, nor as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Neither J.W. Cole Financial nor its representatives provide legal, tax, or accounting advice. Persons who provide such advice do so in a capacity other than as a registered representative of J.W. Cole. Investing is subject to risks, including the loss of principal. Due to volatility within the markets mentioned, opinions are subject to change without notice. Information is based on sources believed to be reliable. However, their accuracy or completeness cannot be guaranteed.